Hi, this is a uh, video for Tiffany, John, and Siavesh's group. For this project, uh, the main point of this was to be able to um, take an ammonia production uh, that was given in the um, handout, apply mass balances, which would be task one, essentially, which this function or this uh, algorithm is displaying right here, um, followed by task two, which is to graphically analyze the system. Um, and task four, uh, which is to compute the cost to cool it down. Now, cooling it down would be through the cooler, um, measured in megajoules, rather. Um, and it would be the company's cost to cut it down. This is the overview of the entire um, schematic of the system, in which this script will be determining each portion of it and um, designating mass balances appropriately. Task two through three involve, uh, two is graphing the system, and three is going to be analyzing the system to see how to make it better and or maximize its output. Um, from that again, we go to uh, task four, in which we find the costs of the entire cooling down system. What we have here is the actual script itself, in which it has all of the previous coding that's needed, the architecture, and um, it pulls in the required functions that are going to be uh, applying the mass balances. Um, function 2 will be taking the min and max of the task 3 and basically placing the cost evaluation into it. This here is the cost function. Um, it's going to pull in all of your variables from the previous inputs uh, such as moles to the reactor, uh, moles of N2 present after the reaction, and amount of H2 present after the reaction. It's going to pull together uh, all, the, all that information and turn it into cost. We have heat, heat capacities for each of these atoms um, that we're going to apply in the equations below and that will eventually transfer into the actual script itself as cost. And here we have the um, secondary function, which the task one, which is going to be the breakdown of the entirety of the process. Um, everything from the fresh feed to the purge and recycle. Um, it's going to break down all the individual components of what we looked at before, which was the entire system in and after the reaction. Um, it again is going to calculate the moles of N2 fed, moles of N2 to the reactor, and moles of inert to the reactor. This afterwards will produce the amount purged and the overall um, fractional, uh, I guess, a fractional conversion of the system. Um, as for the function, we'll go ahead and get started on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this script. So it's going to ask for an amount of fresh feed. Um, that's going to be the mole fraction of inert gas. I'm going to put 0.05. Then it's going to ask for a single pass conversion. We're going to put 0.9. This is just a test run. Please enter the fraction of the stream leaving the condenser as it's purged. Uh, we'll say that's 0.5. So it goes ahead and makes a graph based on, or makes three graphs, based on the variables of the reactor, um, the fraction, and the inert gases to see, say, if the moles of ammonia go down, most likely the purge is going up. So the more purged, the more ammonia uh, production goes down. As far as fresh feed um, of the mole fraction of inert, if it goes further uh, to a higher percentage, the production of ammonia goes down. The single pass conversion of the reactor, of course, if it were to increase, the production of ammonia would go up. And that's essentially what it's produced. Now task 3 was asking us to um, calculate or see basically where we can improve the system. Uh, for that we have some text that's, being, that's been printed. 
saying the theoretical max of production of ammonia is 0.495 moles of ammonia fed. Um, basically, if the, uh, the mole fraction of inert and the purge should be minimized and the fractional conversion maximized to achieve the maximum ammonia production. Um, and this is where it comes into cost analysis. This is going to be uh, number four, uh, task four in this situation. Uh, it's going to ask how many moles of feed or what amount enters the system now that we have all the percentages. We'll go ahead and say that's 1,000. Um, it's going to add, it's printed out what that would cost for the cooling sector. Um, total to cool down to negative 20 degrees, I believe it is, and it's coming out of the reactor at 450. So between that much, we have our code that actually, or our script rather, that actually has that in there. Um, rather, it's a function. Um, but it's going to loop and ask if we want to keep doing this. We can go ahead and select yes. It'll just start the whole process over again. We'll go ahead and do point O2 for the inert gas. We'll go ahead and have a fractional conversion rate of our single pass conversion of just 0.5, which is relatively low. And the fraction leaving the purge is going to be 0.4 this time. So So this is actually going to ask for a feed to enter again after we've input those remaining ones. So we'll go ahead and this time put 900 kilomole per hour. It's again going to give us our cost, uh, which is slightly higher than what we had before. The variables weren't too much different. But this time we're going to go ahead and select no to inputting the new variables. Um, and at that rate, you can see the efficiency of this program in the sense that you wouldn't have to draw out each individual, um, each individual component saying if you wanted to work out this, uh, these percentages and then go ahead and work out these. Obviously the length of time would be a lot less. Um, as far as efficiency, this is just one cost of the entire system. Most likely the largest uh, having to do with heat reduction. And the heat we're reducing in, in step four is actually the coolant right here. It's after it leaves the reactor, it's going to filter out through there in which the condenser separates everything. Um, we have that worked out and actually it matched what we worked out previously with what was run in the script. So it seems that everything is on par. Um, we, we were able to use most of our variables. It looks as if it wasn't, um, it wasn't, it, it was a little excessive for what we planned to do initially. Uh, but coming together, it looks like everything worked out fine. One of the limiting factors in a component like this would be time-sensitive reactions. If it had multiple reactions going on at different points in time due to heat or temperature variables, um, certainly you would have to have sensors on there that were constantly updating. You would have to change the script. It really wouldn't be that much to do, essentially. but. Um, this script itself is limited in, the, in that aspect. So as far as implementations um, in society and the working world, um, it is overall um, seems to be effective, you know, if you were to manipulate it to whatever you needed to do. It's been a good project. Thank you for watching.